Today, today is November the 19th, 2014, and I'm speaking with Dr. Alan Epstein, Vice President Technology and Environment at Pratt & Whitney. Thank you, Dr. Epstein, for talking with us. I'd like to talk with you about the PW4000, a long, legendary air engine. Could you give us a little history about this engine, please? Sure. It started out, actually, with the JT9D, which was the original engine for the 747. So the design was started in 65, flew in 69. It was the world's first commercial high bypass ratio engine. It was at least a 10% improvement in fuel burn over uh, existing engines, and much quieter. And as most pioneering engines, we learned a lot of it. And so there were several versions of it. The, the last version was the uh, JT9D 7R4. That was on the later 747s and A300s and 767s initially. And we kept improving it. But after a while, we realized we needed a an old new design to take best advantage of all the technologies that have been developed over the last 20 years. And that was the Pratt Company 4000. And so that was started in the early 80s and went into service in 87. And it was an exact replacement for the JT90. So you could put it on the 747, you could put it on the 767, the A300, and the A310. And it was on all of those airplanes. It was originally a 52,000 pound engine uh, and has grown, there's a 98,000 pound version of it we built as well. So the engine has a, how many, how many decades have you had the, the, this family of engines? For the 4,000, uh, service in 67, so here we are about 25 years later. So it was selected for the tanker program and uh, it, the, the PW4000 was not the most popular engine on the 767 program. Why do you think the Air Force chose this engine? Well, first, the Air Force didn't choose it. The Boeing chose it. So Boeing builds a commercial airplane and sells it as a green airplane that is not outfitted to Boeing military engines to outfit. So for the tanker competition, in both cases, the Airbus entry and the Boeing entry, were complete airplanes, and the choice is a commercial choice by the manufacturer of the airplane. But the answer is pretty simple, which is the Pratt slogan is dependable engines, and it's tough to have a more dependable engine than the PW4000. So then what do you think makes this PW4000 so well suited to this mission for the tanker? But, the tanker mission is one of absolute reliability. The Air Force has to depend that the tanker is there, it's on station, and it can stay on station for its mission. It needs very high dispatch reliability, so you make best use of the, the assets that you purchase, and you can't make a better choice than the 4000. So the engine was chosen for its, its just reliability, and it's a dependability? dependability uh, there's 150 million flight hours on the 4000s. They've been used by dozens and dozens of airlines around the world. Uh, there's uh, over 2,000 flying today. It's pretty close to the world's most dependable engine. The tanker program runs for a very long time. So how long, how long do you think the, pr the production on the PW4000 has got, got, you know, looking forward? Where, how does that work out for you, for, for Pratt? Well, currently, the, the tanker program is planned to go through 2027 in terms of airplane procurement. Uh, if they're foreign military sales or if the Air Force decides they like it and want more, then we'll continue production. And since there's so many 4,000s out there flying, we'll be making spares for quite a while as well. But there are no more commercial sales of 4062s, that is 62 thousand pound thrust versions of the 4000 that will go in the tank. But we do make spares. So when does the first tanker engine come in for maintenance? In 2035. So when we said dependable engine, we mean dependable engine. So in a normal Air Force engine program, you'd be considering how do you stock spares and set up the logistics chain. But there's an immense capability in the commercial world to overhaul these engines. They 
don't have to be overhauled the first one in 2035 because the Air Force doesn't use the airplanes in the same time-intensive way that an airline does. So we have quite a while to uh, firm up the planning for the support. When you talk about spares, you could be, Pratt could be building spares for this engine to, to 2050 then? Yeah, although typically the Air Force provisions for spares in their plan. So I would expect that the Air Force uh, will buy a different number of spares than a commercial airline will. And uh, we'll, it's so far in advance in terms of, of keeping the production line open. Uh, it, it isn't a problem. How will the last PW4000 engine delivered to the tanker program differ from the first one? Will there be any difference at all? Uh, since the engine is so well worn out and so reliable, there's no plan on changing that at all. The Air Force has great incentive to keep all the units identical in terms of cost, reliability, maintainability. And there are no engine changes between the 4062 and the current ones flying. There are a few ch changes in the nacelle. And the nacelle is owned by Boeing, not by Pratt. So there's slight upgrades due to FAA changes, because this is a commercially certified airplane and engine, uh, but there's no changes to the engine. Are there any technologies from the GP7200 or even the GTF engine that are coming back into the 4000? It's actually going the other way, which is the GP72 is basically a 4000 low spool. And so here, we, we got to design a whole new engine in the mid the uh, 2000s and best technology was based on Ron Pratt 4000 technology so that's what's in the engine. The, the Air Force wants a highly reliable, learned out, completely dependable engine. That's why the 4000 is such, such a really good choice. Putting new technology, although I'm a guy who promotes and is and responsible for new technology and loves it, uh, putting newest technology that isn't the way to uh, build the most dependable engine from scratch. Even though the 4000 uh, was the first engine in history to go into service with ETOPS uh, certified operation, and that was the 4084 for the 777. So as the 4000 carries on, can you tell us a little bit about what Pratt is looking at for next generation big engines? Yeah, it's pretty clear, A, what an engine has to do. It has to deliver value to the customer, value to the customer's fuel burn, maintenance cost. You can say dispatch reliability, but the 4000 is 99.9 .9 now. It has almost no in-flight shutdowns. It's, it's tough to improve on those records, other than the fact you want them in the first engine, not the last engine. And indeed, the new GTFs have at, at introduction to service, have 10 times better in-flight shutdown rate than uh, ETOPS requirements, even though there's on ETOPS airplanes to begin with. But it's going to be a geared engine. All future engines are going to be geared engines. It's clear now. Uh, slower speed, lower noise, higher efficiency fan, uh, 8 to 10 to 12 percent better fuel consumption than the ones now. Depends upon what year it goes into service. And if you have some insight as to what year the next opportunity to put a wide body engine on an airplane, I'd really love to hear it. Uh, we're doing technology now for it, for all parts of the engine. The engines will be much higher pressure ratio, above 60. Uh, they won't run as hot as people think, so they'll be more efficient. The cores will look tiny compared to current uh, wide bodies, but enormous fans. And in fact, if, if we look at a GTF without the accessories on it, the first thing that strikes an engine guy when they look at the core that produces the power is, is that real? Is it really that small? And the answer is yeah. So I see the core as being half the size of today's core for these advanced engines, while delivering longer life, much better fuel burn, and for the fans, lower noise. Could you give us an estimate of uh, a thrust class that you would look at as, as the next step up from the GDF engine? Well, look, we're, we're prepared to do what the 
airframers want. So is it an A380 size engine? We facilitated the gear test rigs to do that. So when we were making our capital investments, we saw that we wanted to do big engines, and these facilities were built and set up to do uh, 70, 80,000 pound thrust engines readily. Uh, is it going to be a 757 replacement, an A3, uh, 100, A310 replacement? People are talking about those. Uh, the way it works for us is an airframer comes and says, here's, here's the airplane we're, we're going to do next. We've got to work together. We worked intensively for six months, and they said, well, we changed our minds. Now we're going to look at this one. Uh, so we prepare generic technologies, and then the design and development effort, which is about four and a half years, is taking those technologies and implementing it in a specific design. Thank you very much. Thank you.